All right, it's gonna be a little bit bumpy because as I'm sure is obvious, this is kind of a car cast, but I can't really help when random topics enter my brain. It's kind of came up right as we were getting ready to leave for some place. And Phoenix is gonna be part of this video, but she's gonna be a floating voice. I'm not putting her on video because some of you people in my comments section can't just be civil adults and nice to each other. So we don't really trust you anymore. <laughs> but she still wants to be part of it. So you'll hear her kind of off to the side here and there. And funny enough, the topic I wanna to discuss right now kind of directly correlates to the whole um, rude people in the comments type of thing. Cause I want to talk about bullies. <laughs> I just thought of someone uh, from my past, not a bully, a nice person, <laughs> but it kind of related to like the trauma that kids have from being bullied as children, whether it was by family or by people in school. And I don't think that as a whole society and especially adults take school bullying seriously enough. I think it's like, oh, it's kind of annoying and hard when you're a kid, but like you'll grow up and you'll get over. And it's like, not not necessarily. <laughs> some people don't, it depends on the kind of bullying that happened. Like everyone has like some little asshole kid here and there that's just kind of rude or just wants to ruin your day. And like, you can kind of get through just like a rude comment here and there, but some people had it relentlessly. And what I thought about was there was this kid that I knew in high school. We didn't like hang out, hang out or anything. I would see him like in the hallway or during fire drills and stuff. Sometimes I shared a class with him and that's about it. I don't want to drag his real name into it. So we'll just call him Mark for right now. So I was like bully bullied in high school. I went from a private school to a public school very abruptly and in private school, there were some little trolley brats, but things were kind of run with an iron fist, so you got away with a lot less. I mean, there were still definitely some horror stories, but there wasn't as much like schoolyard bullying going on. It was more like situational stuff. But in public school, it was kind of like every child for himself, and it really sucked because the kid was basically responsible for whatever reason they were getting bullied for. And I got everything from people doing physical stuff to me. Like, it, it was like a terrible, like, 80s movie for me. That's the level. I mean, I would just be sitting at lunch minding my own business and people would literally dump trash on me in front of the lunch ladies who did absolutely nothing to stop it because I'm almost an adult. I should be able to, like, handle my own battles and stuff. So, like, I had some nasty stuff going on. And this kid, Mark, whenever he would see me, whether it was like in gym class or in the hallway or something, he would be really nice. He'd speak really softly and really kindly, so like no raised voice or anything. He would say something like, oh, that shirt's really nice, or like, your hair looks nice today or something, just like something nice like that, and then that was any go about his business. He'd just say one really nice thing, smile, and move along. And for a minute, I'd be like, wow, this is nice because I have so many people being nasty to me, like when I'm not doing anything to them, that it's nice to have this little reprieve with just this one guy who says one nice thing. But then I would get home from school and I would sit there and I would dwell because if you've got trauma, you can't help it. Your brain never quits. And I would immediately start going, what if I'm an idiot? What if he's saying these nice things to me in the moment, but then he's going home and laughing to all of his friends on MySpace or something, being like, this little dumbass actually thinks I'm being nice to them and is actually making fun of me or something. He never did or said anything that could lead me to believe he was honestly doing something mean like that, but I was so traumatized by years worth of bullying that I was convinced every time someone said they were my friend or every time someone said, something nice to me that they were actually doing something mean to the side when I wasn't around. Which is really sad, but you know, it is what it is. And that kind of thing made me start thinking about how serious schoolyard bullying actually is and that adults need to take it more seriously. And that even though technically, oops, sorry, 
technically every school has some kind of no bullying policy. It's rarely enforced or it's so vague you can't really tell what kind of help you're going to get. And that's where the problem lies for me because it's like, okay, well, they tell you just ignore it. But if you have trauma or mental illness on top of the bullying or as a result of the bullying, you can't ignore it. Your brain doesn't let you ignore it. So you're just stuck on your own trying to deal with this trauma by yourself when the adults in the room should be doing something more to help you. Or it becomes, oh, well, he's acting like that because like something bad is happening at home. It's like, I'm sorry for that. Like. This kid doesn't deserve to be going through something terrible at home, but at the same time, that doesn't entitle him to treat the other kids like crap for absolutely no reason. Not a good um, excuse, in my opinion. And it's still kind of going on. Like, we're old enough now that we have friends who have kids who are in, like, middle school, which is frightening. I hate thinking about that. <laughs> but it's the, it's the truth. And these kids are still having the same problem where it's like, okay, some kid is bullying me or a lot of kids are bullying me so they go to the principal or they go to the school counselor or they go to the teachers anyone and the teachers don't do jack to help it's always up to the child going through the trauma to figure it out on their own and i just i don't know did you have that same kind of situation where it was basically like we're not really going to do much outside of just saying oh sorry you went through that it's basically going to be the kids problem to deal with, even though they claim to have an anti-bullying thing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I had six years worth of anger management because I finally had a, what do I call it? A, uh, yeah, like a mental break a from break bullying. Down from bullying, and this was in, when I was in kindergarten. This kid, every single day, bully me to the point where I finally just had it and he cut my hair with scissors and I saw him in the hallway when he was getting a drink I pushed him against the wall and I accidentally broke his hand uh -huh. and it was because I just had I had a hard like life growing up I was dealing with um, really horrible family issues at the time. I was seven years old. I didn't know how to control anything. But I went to Catholic school and they automatically put me into anger management and thought that was a way to cure it. I had it over six years to the point where they patted me down until I was not allowed to show any source of emotions. Or I was not allowed to get upset. Mm -hmm. So they did it the wrong way where I am afraid to do anything for myself, to stand up for myself. Yeah, and that's exactly what I'm talking about, both in private school and public school. My sister and I went through the same thing where like, we would be getting mercilessly bullied by people. My sister to the point where some kid actually slammed her face into the gravel on the playground and chipped her teeth. These kids just got away with it because they were having a hard time at home or whatever other excuse they wanted to give. And it's like, well, if that's the case, if this kid is bullying children because he's having a hard time at home, then maybe you should actually look into getting the kid help instead of just allowing him to just abuse other children. And we were always the ones who got punished for the bullying. Whenever I was bullied, it was like, why are you being so sensitive? Why are you so upset about it? I'm like, because there's nowhere to run. I can't get away from it. And the second I would try to stand up for myself, it was, why did you talk to that kid like that? Why did you touch that kid? Why did you do this and that? Well, the bully just got away with murder practically every single day. And it's a problem. Like, we need to stop making excuses only for the boys. I understand. I was a psych major for a little while in college. I understand that people aren't bullies for no reason. A lot of them, yes, are absolutely going through a tough home life or something else that is unseen by others. But just like when you're an adult, your trauma or your mental illness is yours to take care of. You're the one who needs to go 
and get help. You're the one who needs to sort it out and make sure you're not hurting other people. It shouldn't be up to the people around you to just take your abuse. And we need to start teaching people from childhood that it's okay to be traumatized. It's okay to be having a hard time right now because of something that you're going through, but you do not need to hurt somebody else to get through your pain. That's how I feel. But yeah, there's not like a huge resolution from this video. For some reason, it just popped into my head and the boy I was talking about at the beginning of this, like that is how serious schoolyard bullying can get. This isn't something that people just get over once they're not in school anymore. We're in our 30s and because of the bullying I went through as a kid, I still have trouble believing people when they say that they actually like me and want to be my friend or they want to hang out with me. I'm like, well, when's the other shoe going to drop? When are they going to do something bad to me? I have a lock on my phone, even though you're always, you know the code, she can get into it whenever she wants because I have nothing to hide. I just have a bunch of like cat photos in here and stuff, but it's because people just take my phone and do nasty things with it and stuff. And I'm like, I still carry that stuff with me to this day where I'm just convinced that no one is just being nice. They're being nice so they can do something bad to me later and we need to start taking childhood bullying more seriously and actually actively trying to make it so it doesn't happen. But that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. It's just something I want people to start thinking about a little bit more, especially if you have school age kids. Like if your kid's being bullied, stand up for them if they can't stand up for themselves. If these kids are getting away with abusing them and the adults in the school are doing nothing about it, force them to do something about it. Be like, no, you're gonna do something about that kid. You're gonna make it so they stop harassing my child. This is unacceptable. But that's pretty much all I got for today. So hopefully people got some of uh, this and I'm glad you peeped in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and everyone just behave yourselves.